Hey guys, what's up? It's Brandon here for RC Nightmare. In front of me is the 5T, and today we're shooting a video for you on, on just a couple small upgrades that uh, we've done on the cheap for this thing. It's got a hefty price tag, so anything you can upgrade for a cheap amount of money is, is real nice. We found two main things we like to do right off the bat. Uh, we've been running it with these mods for a long time. We're very happy with it, so I want to pass the savings along to you. I'm going to pull the body off, show you guys what we're working with today. So the biggest problem we found with this, just out of the box, and of course there's a ton of things you can upgrade on it, but in terms of what we could do right away, was a little bit of uh, mushy brakes. And so this big quarter scale brake servo here, every time you hit the brakes, I'm going to kind of pick this up for you. These brake links here obviously go to the brake bracket. Every time you hit the brakes, this servo could flex. You can see the flex right there towards the brakes. And what that gives you is mushy brakes. You don't have a solid link between your servo and your brake links. It's just soaking up a lot of the torque. And so we did a real simple mod. We grabbed a couple of Traxxas Jado tie rods, a uh, few bits of hardware. I got some 20 odd millimeter screws here. A couple already on here. I'm going to show you what to do with those. And that's it. So really the total parts cost is maybe eight bucks altogether. And we've made stiffeners essentially, or torque arms if you will, that go between the servo and that brake bracket so you don't have any slop. So the first thing you're going to do is remove that top brake bracket. I already got it disconnected to show you what I've done with it. And you can see these two screws sticking out the side here. Let's see if I can get you a little better shot. There you go. I've left them in there so you can see the angle that they're drilled at. I drilled two very small holes on each side, matching the angle of the bracket. So you can see while they're kind of on an angle, they're actually perfectly perpendicular to the bracket. And it was about, I was just undersized of three millimeters, you know, whatever drill bit you got to line around that's a little bit small so that you can thread them in there by hand. You don't want to over drill it and have them loose. So I got those. Those are, I think, like 20 millimeter screws. So now that I, once you get those holes drilled, I'm going to back these out like so. You're going to remove these two servo mount screws. I'll show you again what I mean. Got one here. If I move the arm, there's one right there too. Remove those stock screws and again, get some longer ones. This is the length I got. Again, it's 20 something millimeter. Length is not exact here, just get it real close. And that allows you to add these two tie rods from here to the holes we drilled on the bracket. So let me put it all together for you. Stick the bracket back on. Like so. Make sure you got your cams positioned in the right direction. So they're for pulling, not pushing. Now we can take our tie rods and again, got my longer screw for the servo mount. Put the washer on first. I'll give it some bite. Just like that. And then you're going to take the screws that you drilled the holes for previously into the bracket and mount them like so. Torque this down. And I went as long as I could on these screws going into the bracket because there's not a whole lot of meat there. And so I measured it ahead of time. And again, I think maybe 23 millimeters. You'll have to measure it for yourself to be exact. Just bring the bracket with you to the store. And I'm just going to put both these on real quick and I'll show you what the final product looks like. There's really very little work involved. You're drilling two tiny holes in the plastic bracket, so all you need is a hand drill. And then you're sticking on the two screws to go with it. And it clears all the stock linkages. There's no adjustments to be made. And it really adds for quite a bit of extra brake, braking strength. And really, the, the main advantage here is over time, your brakes will remain consistent. That constant flexing on the servo mount is going to weaken the bracket over time. You know it will. Eventually, you'll just have mushy brakes. And there's a ton of upgrades that can be done on brakes, but this one being an $8 upgrade with very minimal modifications is just a great way to go. Again, we're going for cheap mods. Screw this all the way down for you. Make sure it's nice and snug. And again, the key thing for me here was 
under drilling those holes and threading them by hand so I didn't have any slop. Stick this guy back on. Oh, again, put the washer on first. The whole idea here is that washer compresses the rubber gasket that holds the servo in place. So the servo doesn't move around on you. Torque this down. Torque this guy down and She is ready to go. So now you can see what we've done. We've added in two torque arms or stiffener bars between the servo and the, and the brake bracket. So there's no more squeezing. I can't flex that servo at all anymore. I'm pushing as hard as I can. Nice and stiff. Great, great upgrade, especially you're talking almost a 40 pound vehicle. You want as much brake strength as you can get. Now the second upgrade we did was for the power system. They include a pretty nice receiver pack with this in the box. You get a 3005 cell Nikamata Hydride. Nice big old battery box. We thought we'd make a little better use of that space in here. And what we've added, and I'm going to try to get a good shot of this for you, is the Castle Creations BEC Pro. It kind of looks like a speed controller. It's just a big regulator. And so now what I run in here is a three cell Thunder Power This is a 1250. I also have, this does fit, this is my favorite pack to run in here. Thunder Power 2253 cell. Fits right in the box. The regulator drops this 12 volts down to six for the radio system. So these giant scale servos have plenty of torque, plenty of current they can draw from. And on top of that, because I'm running a 12 volt battery, we can run this straight into lights, headlights and taillights for the truck. Running right off 12 volts and we can get standard automotive headlights for that. So that little guy plugs right in. I soldered a Deans to one end, and then it actually comes with the receiver plug on the other end. It plugs right into the stock plug. No modification here whatsoever. I just taped it on. Battery fits right in there. Plenty of space in the tray, and you get really a lot more torque to your steering and brake servos, and the stiffener arms make sure that all that torque goes to your brakes and not soaked up in the flexible plastic mount. So that's our quick mods for this thing. You know, this thing's been out for a little over a month now. There's plenty of mods coming out on the market, plenty of aftermarket pieces. These are two that we really enjoyed. Very functional mods, very cheap to do. The Pro ESC is a little overkill. You can get away with the standard one, the, the 10 amp rated. I just happen to have it lying around. It fit real nice. So we threw that in there. If you guys got any mods that you know of you'd like to do that are on the cheap, feel free to comment down below. Or if you have any questions, comment down, down below. Check out our website while you're at it, rcnightmare.com. We revamped the whole thing for you. Curious to see what you have to say about it. Thanks for watching this video, guys. We'll see you soon.